Good morning and a very warm welcome to this one point oneness session. My name is Els, and for those of you who join us for the first time, let me give you a little bit of a background. We started this project way back in May 2020. This is around three years ago now. That was in the middle of the pandemic lockdown, which was a very stressful time for many, many people, I would say globally. Uh, one of our friends suggested when he knew that we are meditating on a regular basis, he was saying, why not to share some of these thoughts and ideas with a wider audience? And that was the start of the project. What we have been doing since then is every Friday, it's every fortnight now, we invite an experienced meditator and we ask him or her to share their thoughts about a particular topic, but also to guide us into a short meditation. So far, we have had more than 100 guest speakers from around the world. The sessions have been recorded and they are available on YouTube. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome Yogesh Sharda, who joins us from Turkey. Yogesh was born in Africa in, in, with an Indian background, but he was educated and has been living in England for many years. He is a personal development trainer, and he runs workshops um, for uh, businesses, hospitals, universities, local communities, etc., and I would say globally, he has been around the world. Um, I have met him several times in London, uh, but also in India. And so um, I always feel he's a very experienced meditator and always very peaceful. And I'm so very, uh, very much looking forward to this session with Yogesh. And the topic for today is the intelligent heart. So very warm welcome to you, Yogesh. Thank you so much, Els, and hello to everyone. And uh, firstly, let me also extend my thanks and congratulations to the team at one point for uh, continuing these sessions, which um, I believe are important, not just during the COVID times that we pass through, but also these times when there are so many challenges to our inner peace and well being, just with the things we see happening around us and in the world. And so, the topic which I have chosen to speak on today the intelligent heart. And of course, is to do with the way we feel our emotions. And why this is important, because it is the case that uh, so much of our lives are driven by the way that we feel. So many of our decisions and the choices we make are informed by how strongly we feel about things. And we can see this in the home, uh, in terms of two people dealing with each other and making decisions. We see this in business, in an office, where people have to make decisions every day. But also we see this at the very highest levels of leadership, where the way people feel, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, is influencing their decision making. And so the intelligent heart is all about knowing how to take care of, how to manage and indeed how to own your feelings so that they can best inform you in how you live your life, your decision makings, and how you manage your relationships. I'd like to start by creating some context here that uh, I feel there are three main types of hearts that we can have, uh, two types of heart, I feel we should not have, but the third type is the one to have. And so the first type of heart, which is the one to not have, is a soft heart. And a person with a soft heart is too fragile, too sensitive, too emotional. So such a person 
easily gets into an emotional dynamic, even just by seeing or hearing about somebody else's problem or issue. Too fragile, the emotions flare up very easily. And there's a very high level of sensitivity. And if you have a friend who has a soft heart, that person will agree with you regarding everything in your life and will become more emotional and will suffer more than you just by hearing your story. So a soft-hearted person is not so useful as a friend. Then the second type of heart also to not have is a hard heart. And the person with a hard heart is, as you can imagine, the opposite to a soft-hearted person. Is somebody who seems to not care about your situation. It's almost as though there's a brick wall between you and that person when you may be sharing some problem or some difficulty that you're passing through. Talking to somebody with a hard heart is a bit like having a conversation with a fridge. You get a blast of cold air and a strange mechanical sound. And it seems as though what you are expressing just isn't getting through. And you get a very clear signal that, well, this is re really your problem and I'm not interested, I don't really care. And so this cold energy coming from a person who has a hard heart. So what's the kind of heart to have? Not a soft one, not a hard one. But the kind of heart which I feel connects us to our spirituality is to have a strong heart. And a strong heart is an intelligent heart. A strong heart, if you speak to a strong-hearted person about your problems, for example, then he or she will listen to you, understand you, and you will feel good in the presence of somebody with a strong heart. But at the same time, that person will be able to say something, do something, which actually is going to help you in the long term. A strong-hearted person will not just absorb your pain or your stress and also feel stressed, but is able to see the bigger picture of your life is able to understand your situation and therefore is not clouded by his or her emotions. The result of this is a strong-hearted person becomes very clear-headed, very clear intellect, and therefore is able to guide you in perhaps what you could be doing differently, whether it's in your relationship with some person or is something to do with work in any area of your life. And so how to become such a person with a strong heart is really very, very useful as a friend because they can help you to stand on your own two feet. They can enable you to come into your own power and be able to solve problems by yourself. Now, what are some of the principles involved in having this kind of intelligent heart? Well, we know that for the recent period of time, especially as we were in the thick of the COVID period, we were all being asked to observe social distancing. And wherever you went in any public space, whether it's a huge airport, or even just down the corner shop, there'd be markings on the floor telling you stand here, then a meter and a half or two meters away, another marking saying stand here. And some places were very strict at making people observe social distancing. 
And so what we were told is the message there that if you are this much apart from another person, then there is less chance of you picking up the bug. So social distancing, enabling you to maintain your safety in terms of your physical health. But I would say that we also need something else, which we could call as spiritual distancing. And that means to be able to find that healthy spiritual distance to be had between you and any other person. The result of that is that you do not absorb the anger or the stress or the sorrow or the fear from another person into yourself if you have this spiritual distancing. Now, in some parts of the world, uh, some people tend to be quite apart from each other, emotionally quite distant to each other. And in the part of the world where I live in the Mediterranean area, uh, people tend to be more like this. So I think to be like this is not so good. It's a bit cold, a bit distant, a bit aloof. But also, I think to be like this is not so good. And I feel the correct way to be with others is to be like this. Be close, be friendly, be loving, be caring, be supportive, but don't be stuck. When you are emotionally stuck to any individual, whoever it may be, and if that person goes a bit crazy one day, has a bad day, has moods going up and down, it will affect you a lot as well. That person's behavior, that person's tone of voice, even just that person's facial expressions will cause you to also come into some kind of emotional turbulence. But if you're like this with others, and if somebody else goes a bit nuts one day, a bit emotionally up and down, a bit moody, you are still stable. And your stability will actually help the other one to become stable. And that's an aspect of the intelligent heart that I know how to maintain my peace of mind, my happiness, and my self respect my capacity to love, to shine, and knowing how to use that, how to express that in my relationships with other people. So how to become unstuck if we're like that, or how to move from this space of coldness, aloofness, and distancing to being at the correct distance with others. Excuse me. Now, what this requires is what I would consider to be the main formula for harmony in human relationships. And that is the balance of two particular things. So, on the one hand, of course, in our relationships with family, friends, and so on, we like to share love and we also like to receive love from them but yet in order to keep the quality of love clean or pure or authentic it does need to be balanced with something else so what is the other thing which has to balance the love that our heart may be experiencing in order to maintain the cleanliness of that love the other side of that balance is what is described as a form of detachment. And let me share a, an image here, which can just help to explain this a bit more. So I hope you can see this. So with everything in life, uh, balance is important. Balance enables there to be sustainability. 
And so in this little image, this seesaw image here, it showed that when we are balanced in being detached and loving in all of our relationships, even with those who are the closest to us, then we're able to maintain that relationship. And there's actually just the expression of a lot of goodness, kindness, and joy in those relationships. But when we become over loving, when we overstep uh, the mark of being loving and the detachment is lost, then as this image is telling us that love changes into something else, that love will become possession. We try to own another person. We try to possess their behavior, their thinking style, their attitudes. And then this slips into trying to control the behavior of someone, wanting that other individual to behave in the way that I want them to behave. Controlling issues enter into the relationship. And then if somebody does not behave the way I want to, then I'll find a way to put pressure upon that individual. And this can take on many different forms in terms of how we communicate or don't communicate or under communicate, miscommunicate. And further, we can make demands that unless you do such and such, I will not do so and so. So as we can see, what's happening is that that uh, loving experience, that experience of sharing love is now being corrupted and changing into all of these things, possession, control, pressure, demands. And then this takes on the, the full-blown form of attachment and dependency. And somewhere at the roots of all suffering, you will find attachment. And when attachment is there, then it uh, distorts our ability to think clearly. When we have this attachment experience, then we make a small issue into a huge issue. We misinterpret what others say, and we completely get the wrong end of the stick. And this then leads to further emotional explosions such as jealousy and then feelings of revenge and so on and so what's happening there is that it's simply the love has gone out of balance the love has become corrupted and what began as an emotional high perhaps now has become correspondingly an emotional low so why that's happened is because the detachment has been lost well, let's have a look at the other end of the, the seesaw. What happens when you go too far into being detached? Well, then you may end up coming across as being a little bit cold, rather distant. And as you can read here, we come across as being very formal or official. And sometimes having a conversation with such a person feels more like a negotiation where you have to be very, very careful with the words you choose. You feel you cannot be yourself in the company of such a person. It's a bit like not just walking on eggshells, but living on eggshells because you don't know what's really going on inside another person's head. So they may come across as very aloof and a bit uncaring. And so that's detachment gone into an extreme and the love is lost. And as I say, I think this is really the main formula in harmony in human relationships to get this balance right between being both detached and loving. And that's an aspect of the intelligent heart. It knows how to get that balance correct. 
whether it's with people you live with or work colleagues, even complete strangers which you, who you interact with in a shop or in an airport, whether it's with a child or it's with a, an older person or whoever it may be. But getting this balance right enables there to be a bridge of communication and relationship to be built with the other. So then how do you do it? How do you move into that space of intelligence with regard to the heart? This then comes to the basic question, which is, I feel, really at the heart of all of our spiritual studies. And that is again and again visiting the answer to the most important question, the question which changes everything, and that is the question of who am I? So let's look at another diagram here just to help us explore this idea of who am I and where am I actually living from? So as you see, this tells us there's three zones here uh, from where we tend to live. And most of us, for the most part, tend to live within the doing or the having zones. In other words, our thoughts, our mind, our consciousness, as we pass through the day, is concerned with and consumed by things I have to do. I have to do this. <coughs> I have to fulfill my family responsibilities. I have to fulfill my professional duties, so on and so forth. The roles, relationships, and routines connected to all the things that I need to do. Or the roles, relationships connected to the things which I have. What do I have? Well, I have a, I have a nationality. I have some status in society. I have a position in my workplace. And then connected to my body, I have a certain race. I have a, currently a certain age. I may have a religion and so on. So what happens is that when we identify with the things that we do or the things that we have, this then generates this thing called ego. This energy of ego is generated as a result of identification with what I do and what I have. And where ego exists, then ego-based emotions will also exist. And those ego-based emotions, such as fear and anxiety, insecurity, anger, they then sabotage our relationships. They get in the way of me being able to really express the best, the highest within my own self. To move into that area of the intelligent heart, I need to then step away from my having labels and my doing labels and come to the very core of my consciousness. And that is my being, the being part. Let me not just know this, but really to live from there. Live as a being. Do not live as a doing or as a having. And it's easy to say this. It's something which we may have heard many times. But to really practice living in that awareness. I am the being. I am the spiritual being. I am the spiritual energy. What this does is it releases from within your consciousness the peace which has always been there the joy, the love, the strength, which has always been latent within your consciousness, within the soul. It gets released when you live in soul awareness, the awareness of being the spiritual energy. 
What happens then is when you come into interaction with others, not coming from a space of emotional neediness, but you're coming from a space of emotional strength. You have more to offer. You have patience to offer. You have understanding to offer. You have forgiveness to offer. Because you're coming from a space of strength or security inside yourself. Then just the last image to show you, then we'll end with a little meditation. This then shows us that as we come into communication, relationship, interaction with others, then we are able to go beyond the ego masks that we may be wearing. And also our vision is able to cut through the ego masks of the other. And this then makes our communication and our relationships very authentic. Firstly, if I am this soul, this spiritual energy on the left, let me be able to step back from all my ego masks. Of, well, as you see here, gender, nationality, culture, race, age, profession, religion, so on and so forth. Just to be aware of myself as a spiritual energy. And if I am rooted in that awareness, then when I come across another, another individual, then I'll be able to initially see the other also as a spiritual energy, as a soul. Even though the ego masks may be very different to the ego masks I am carrying. But if I really relate to the other human being also as a spiritual energy, this will help me to go beyond my own prejudices, my own biases, my own conditioning, and will generate a very genuine and authentic feeling of respect for the other, respect and love and acceptance for the other. And that's how we're able then to build real relationships with others and to be able to come together, even if we have some problems to solve. I very much like this phrase, connection before solution. Whenever we have any issue, any problem to solve, whether it's in our office or even the highest levels of leadership in the world, I believe the first thing is let us connect together as beings, as spiritual beings, as human beings. And if we come together in that space of connection, then we can look at a problem and find a solution more easily. And that's why it's important to have to work on developing an intelligent heart. It then allows the head to also work well. So as we come to the to our close, let's now do a little meditation together to just experience stepping back and coming to that space of peace and quietness within ourselves. So I ask you if you're comfortable just to have your back straight, your feet flat on the floor, and I'll speak a simple guiding commentary. So let's spend a few moments just to be with myself. I know the world outside of me is the world of sound, the world of movement, it is the world of doing. And I cannot control the world outside of me. But there is also a world inside me. The world of my thoughts, of my feelings, of my experiences. 
my inner world. The inner world is in my own hands. So let me choose the thought of peace. Let me ask myself, who am I? Behind all the roles I play every day, who am I? Behind the labels I carry, who am I? Not what I do, and not what I have. I am. Spiritual energy. I am light. Yes. being of inner peace, the soul. The radiant star in the center of the forehead. Let me be with this thought. Peace, light, return, and I feel free. Thank you, Yogesh. Um, very beautiful meditation commentary, very peaceful experience. And what I liked about your talk is how you are exploring the topic of what is an intelligent heart. And especially when you explained that we need a strong heart, not a soft heart, not a hard heart, but strong, which means actually that I'm able to see the bigger picture I'm not clouded by my emotions, but also not by the emotions of other people. So thank you for exploring that topic. And um, also um, the whole idea of uh, being supportive, caring, loving to other people, but having that healthy distance. Um, that was very beautiful. So thank you so much. Um, thanks to the technical team. And uh, for everyone, thanks for joining us. I hope you have enjoyed the session and we are looking forward to seeing you again at the next 1.1 session. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. <laughs>